Hello, my name is Jennifer and welcome to my brief tutorial on how to prepare for a game update in The Sims 4 and this applies to the computer version of the game. Now, first off, I'm going to go over the essentially four steps that I take and then I'm going to go over in more detail more information about each of those steps and then I'll also touch on briefly on what to do if you want to not do the update immediately. Now, first off, for the four steps, three are done before you update your game and one is done after you update your games. So the first step applies only if you use mods and custom content, and that is to move your mods folder to your desktop. The rest of the steps apply for everybody. So the second step is to make a backup of your saves. The third step is to delete your local thumb cache file. And then the fourth step, which you do after you update the game, is repair your game. Now, if you want to avoid updating the game when the update goes live, before the update goes live, make sure to go offline in Origin. And then you can go online when you're ready to do the update. So for the first step of taking your mods and putting it on your desktop, it's quite simple. You go into your folder, Documents, Electronic Arts, The Sims 4, and you take your mods folder and you move it to your desktop, and then it's gone. When you go into your game, it is going to generate another mods folder, another new resource file, but it will know there's no mods there. Usually what happens is that the mods and custom content are automatically disabled with the majority of updates. So why move your mods folder to your desktop? It's just cleaner and more complete. If you have a problem in your game and your mods are in there, even if they're disabled, it still could be your mods causing the problem. So it's just better just to move it out. It's not going to hurt anything. I do recommend that if you are doing this, <laughs> and I recommend this for anybody, is to have a vanilla save where it doesn't rely on your mods and your custom content, especially if you have custom content on a lot of Sims or if you have mods that really affect the game. Like if you have MC Command Center and you have more than eight Sims in a household, if you go into a save and you don't have that mod in your folder, you're going to lose those extra Sims. That's just one example, but there are other examples. So just have a vanilla save that you can go in and test things after the game is updated that you don't mind and that it doesn't touch your saves that use the mods extensively. Now for the second step, which is to make a backup of your save, I actually recommend you make a backup of your saves or even your full Sims 4 folder, you know, however often you need to, depending on how much you play. I usually do it at a minimum once a month, but if I know there's a major things happening and that I don't want to lose, like say my hard drive fails, that's the main reason you would also do a backup. You, you want to put it somewhere else. So if you're going to make a backup that's not just for the update, you want to put it somewhere that's not on your hard drive. So a secondary hard drive, an external hard drive, if you have a cloud spot, you can put it there. That might take a while depending on your connection to the internet or on a USB key. But the main thing for an update is to make sure you take a copy of your saves and you place it elsewhere. So you could just take it and then you just, you know, right click on it and you take copy because you don't want to remove them. You just want to copy them and then you could put them on your desktop if you're only doing it for the purposes of the update, not actually have, wanting to have it somewhere else. I have a secondary hard drive, an external hard drive that I put mine on when I'm doing it. So I'm not going to do that right now because it can take a bit of time because my saves folder is quite big. But essentially, when you do that, then you would just paste. And so <laughs> I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to cancel it. <laughs> and I'm going to delete it from there because I don't need it there. So that's how you do it. You copy and you paste it into another location. So that's how you do the second step. Now the third step is that we're going to delete the local thumb cache package file and the game generates that every time you go in. You can see mine is very small because I deleted it. I delete it pretty much every time I go into my game. So, and I obviously haven't really, all I did was open the game, didn't go in and play. So it just generated the file and there's nothing in there. It's a good idea to delete that quite regularly because it can get some corrupt information in it. So if you start having lagging and all those other problems, deleting that can really help a lot. And I, a lot of people have problems and I say delete that and the problems go away. Oftentimes it could be mods and custom content, but sometimes it's just a simple thing of deleting that file. So now the fourth step is the step that I said that you do 
after you've updated your game. Now, you do, of course, need to be online to one, update your game, and two, repair your game. So obviously, when you have an update, it'll have a little thing saying it's there's an update there. And there isn't right now, but to update it, you would, you know, right click on it and then update the game, which I'm not going to do because there is no update right now. But then you're going to do repair. And then it just essentially compares your game files to what's on EA's servers. And then if there's any in yours that are broken, corrupt, it'll just replace them. It does not affect your saves at all or anything in your game. It just It's just the game files. So that's it. That's what I do to prepare before I go into my game for the first time after a game update. Now, if you do not want to update your game because you have a lot of mods in your game and you want to wait for the make sure that they're working and they're not broken you can go into origin and go offline and then if you're offline it's not going to know there's a game update and so it won't make you do a game update and you can play as long as you stay offline you can play with the version of the game that you have the next thing is if you do use mods and custom content you need to make sure and check back to where you got them from whether they have updated them if they've had hot fixes because they broke it is more likely to happen with mods but occasionally custom content has issues also and sometimes with custom content all you need to do is you need to get sims 4 studio once it's been updated and then you need to do a, a batch repair of your custom content so just to sum up there were four things to do when you're updating your game three before and one after one was to move your mods folder to your desktop, of course, only if you use mods and custom content. Two, make a backup of your saves because sometimes things can get broken when there's updates and you can go back to your saves if that happened. Three, delete your local thumb cache package file. And four, after you've installed the update, repair your game. So that's it for this brief tutorial on how to prepare for a game update. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye. This has been Jennifer. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. I'd love to see them. If you like the video, please leave a like. And if you'd like to see more videos of challenge, let's plays, tutorials, and occasional speed builds, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thanks very much.